No. No. Sit. What do you think? What's hell? Now I see the problem. Simon is actually a red sound dog. Which means that he can get so consumed by his own rage that he can actually fight to kill. Hey. Hey. It's very hard to snap a red sound dog out of it. But I must get through to him so he can unlearn this violent behavior. And Simon lives in a constantly changing environment, which makes him feel insecure. Sandy needs to learn to recognize his insecurities and correct them before he acts out. All right, let her go again. I'm not sure how to stop him, then we're going to stop her. OK, yeah. you're going to show me how to stop him. Yeah, we're going to stop him first. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> Simon went after Stella just like before. But this time, I gave him a strong correction and followed through until he was in a calm state. That's what Sandy must learn to do to make her home safe for the foster dogs. When you were doing your follow through, but just the way you're doing it is, is tense. Just tense. So when I go in, he, he's in an amp state. I just got to go calm, okay. confident. And that's the only energy that can touch that part. Otherwise, the interpretation is, I'm going to stop momentarily. Yes. And as soon as I regain my energy, I'm going right. to go right back. Right. It looks like Stella is in an excited state as well. I need to get both dogs into a calm state if we're going to get them to move past their bad history. Do you want him off leash? Yeah. Touch. Thanks for being Thank here. You. I have to I have to open this QA by saying that Junior is the exact replica emotionally and physically and personality-wise of the pit that I lived with that passed away a few months ago. And it's the most under, I, it, it's such a malign breed and they are such wonderful, amazing dogs. And it just goes to show, as you've always said, it's about the owner, not the dog. Yeah, I think uh, I, it's the right thing to, 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 uh, to become aware of. Uh, we don't have a problem with dogs. We don't have a problem with breeds. We have problems with humans who are educated, mm -hmm. had to have a healthy, harmonious relationship with what we call men best friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they are our best friends, but we are not their best friend. Yes. Because, you know, we turn around and we blame them for everything they do, mm -hmm. but it's us making them behave that way. We put them in situations that they shouldn't be in. When a dog doesn't, got, doesn't get enough exercise, that energy uh, becomes a buildup, mm -hmm. and that buildup becomes frustration. When a dog doesn't know what the expectations are, uh, uh, how how can he's, how he's going to become social rules, boundaries, limitations in order for us to be here. We need to have rules, boundaries, limitations. In order for me to come here, I have to go through the rules of coming in mm -hmm. here. So most people misinterpret discipline with punishment. You know, and so that's a big mistake. That's what I'm always saying about the formula, exercise, discipline, affection, mm -hmm. body, mind, heart. Most people like to do affection, affection, affection. And by doing that, they end up affecting the dogs. So a little too much of everything or anything is going to be an out-of-balance experience. So basically, you can love a dog too much. Well, I, well let's call, the interpretation of love from my part is exercise, mental stimulation, then affection. The interpretation of my clients is only affection. Yes. So if you only do affection, can you affect a dog? Yes, because he also needs exercise. Size. He also needs mental stimulation. So affection to me is when you fulfill their needs. That's affection to me. I met a woman uh, near my old apartment who bought a Vishla. Yeah. And I grew up with a Vishla, and those dogs need probably, I mean, the Vishla we had went on five-mile runs every single day, and that still wasn't enough. Right. That was just enough for half a day. And <laughs> this woman was complaining to me about how crazy her dog was, and she had her medicated. She had her on doggy Valium. Yeah. To, and I was like, well, maybe you should take her to Central Park. And she was like, oh, no, I don't have any time. I can't do it, blah, blah, blah. So that's exactly what you're talking about. Well, when, I mean, you can also put a backpack on a dog, and mm -hmm. those five miles become 10 miles. Every time you add a challenge, mm -hmm. you're actually draining energy. 
So it's very, very, very important. That, so we learn how to, how do we, let me show you a way where I can challenge the mind here. Mm -hmm. So I can ask the mind not to touch the ball. And he loves this ball, people. Yeah, he loves the ball. So he have to have self-control. It's like, mm -hmm. think, of, think of this like a diet, right? People that love the food, if you don't self-control yourself, you're going to end up eating it. Mm -hmm. So through the game, through the toy, I can teach the brain to be patient, to wait. Oh, I can teach the brain to grab the ball. Junior. <laughs> right? So junior. you have to be able to create two things in the brain of a dog, calmness and excitement. Most people want to keep the brain of a dog excited. Mm -hmm. And so that leads the dog to believe that you want him to be excited at all times. That's what they bark. That's what they dig. That's what they jump. That's what they run away. So it's excited brain that does that. So here. So he also have to let go as fast as, as he took the ball. See, so you have to be able to control instincts. Mm -hmm. So if you can't control a game, then you're not, you're not going to be able to control mm -hmm. a desire created by humans. So, so just like you mentioned the Bisla, that's a hunting dog. Yeah. So then the human turns around and says, let's make a dog that can fight dogs. So we have to be able to control instincts, and that way you control genetics. <laughs> Aw, Junior. What? I love you. I give you that ball. <laughs> yeah, but you have you <laughs> see, giving him rules of how long can he play or the limits, mm -hmm. it also allows him to have self control. Otherwise, that he can become so obsessed that this whole place will become a pool. Yeah. He's gonna start drooling. You see what I mean? So yeah. yeah. So if you let them play for a long period of time with that limits, they can become obsessive. Well, and your show I think illustrates that so well of these dogs that se seemingly are totally out of control. Right. And I mean, you walk into, have you ever walked into a situation where you're like, oh my God, I can't, this is, or. Many times. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, season 911 is about emergencies. Mm -hmm. You know, the last episode I shot before we finished season three is about a dog named Obeshkin, a German shepherd that this lady uh, uh, voluntarily stay away from people. So she's, she hasn't dated for like five years because the dog will kill a person. Yeah, so, so these people learn to isolate themselves like they kidnap themselves. You know what I mean? They kidnap themselves with their dog and because they believe that the dog is, is that dangerous, but they don't realize that by they nurturing that fear, they make the dog even worse. Yeah, so when we start shooting that episode, I asked my camera crew not to get near. I mean, everybody have to be behind me. Wow. I, I was not able to protect, you know, camera guys, they want to they yeah. get the shot. So they're just moving at any time. And so if you move at the wrong time, at the wrong second, someone was going to get <laughs> hurt. Wow, that's yeah. dangerous. That's, that's very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm. and it's and it's like you said, it's so much easier instead of solving the problem to kind of quarantine it, for lack of a better word. Like I had a dog that I told you bit my son in the face. So instead of dealing with that issue, I just would lock him in the bedroom every time kids came over. Right. So to not expose him. Yeah. But I think by doing so, I, I definitely didn't handle the problem. I made it worse. Yeah. And he, you know, he couldn't function. In reality, a lot of people isolate themselves or they suppress things. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about it. Right. And so that's what a lot of my clients end up doing. And they live that way for many, many, many years. So what the only thing they know is, is suppress isolation or medication. Oh, God. You know, so which you don't fix the problem. You know, you can only fix your problems when you deal with, when you know what's missing inside mm -hmm. of you. The dog is a perfect mirror of what the human does on a daily basis or what the human is missing on a daily basis. So they, they're the most honest species on the planet. So let's talk about the first episode of season three, which deals with this nobody that you guys have never heard of called Jerry Seinfeld. And I follow Jerry's wife on Instagram, and she posts amazing pictures of their dachshunds. I had no idea that the dachshunds had some issues. You know, a uh, fight, flight, avoidance, surrender, those are the four reactions mm -hmm. of the brain. So when, when a dog is in a fight state, people call it aggression. When a dog is in a flight state, people call that fear. So Jerry had that, those two problems, a dog that moved forward and a dog that moved away from him. Oh. Yeah, so he have to learn to understand how to control energy, which he saw it as uh, my dogs are unruly, or Caesar is not going to be able to control mm -hmm. this dog, so he's, I, I was going to become depressed because I, was gonna, I wasn't going to be able to help him. Yeah, he did say in the promo that <laughs> yeah. this was going to be your yeah, first failure. I was, I was totally going to become a failure after that. But, you know, they, uh, Jerry never actually walked with the dogs before, and that's actually a very 
important bonding experience. So obviously, I make sure he understands the importance of walking with a dog before he's actually telling the dog what he doesn't agree with. Mm -hmm. Before you tell a dog what you don't like, you have to make you have to do activities that he likes, that he loves. So he sees that you're there for the relationship, not just there because you own the dog mm -hmm. in a way. And so what was your key to solving the problem that Jerry has to take him on well, walks? Well, you know, uh, and it was two state of mind. One is like, I don't want to deal with this mind. And the other one is, uh, I feel sorry for it. So, uh, so if they don't have the same frame of mind to help a dog, and then each dogs are gonna get uh, the dogs are gonna get the wrong messages because each one each person is doing a different strategy. So the first thing is let's let's come up with a strategy that the whole family agrees, mm -hmm. right? And so then from that point on, they realize okay, we're gonna use a leash with a dog that is afraid. We're not gonna let her run away from. See, they were trying to give her food when she was running away from. So, but when a dog is afraid, they don't take food. Right? So they were using food at the wrong time. So they were nurturing, reinforcing okay. over and over behavior. and over. And with the dog that was excited at the door, uh, they were trying to stop him with more excitement. This is, the, this is the, the classic way. Stop, stop, no, leave it, off, off, no, punch, come on, come on. Um, we talk about this. Yeah. So, you know, so they, gave, they become more excited. And so what I taught them, what I teach people is how to, how to communicate with a dog in a calm way and how to come up with a strategy that works for, for both cases. Now I have to ask you a question that, uh, that I think actually applies to a lot of people. I have a cat and we want to get another dog. Yeah. What's the best way of introducing a new pet into a household? Well, this is, this is going to be easy because the cat is going to tell you right away, do I trust the dog I don't? Oh, so the you cat, see, the the cats are have, are have an amazing ability of assessing and evaluating a situation. Okay. And the, the only thing a cat wants is trust. You know, they, they're not going with the mentality, I want to adopt a dog because the dog doesn't have a house. You know what I mean? <laughs> the cat never do, they, they never really uh, uh, approach the situation that way. So w once you bring the dog into your situation, you're going to see if the cat is going to relax mm -hmm. or he's going to become tense or he's going to charge the cat, the dog, I'm sorry. You see, so that is going to be very easy from a cat perspective. So if you listen to the cat, you're going to have everything under control. But if you don't want to trigger a discomfort in the cat, just bring a dog that is in a calm state of mind. Just bring a dog that is not jumping on you mm -hmm. the first day you meet the dog. You know, most people rescue dogs. They jump on them and they say, this dog found me or this dog is mm -hmm. the one for me. So in the animal world, that's just respect. See, dog yeah. lovers believe that if a dog meets them the first day, if the, if the dog jumps on them the first day they meet, uh -huh. that is a good dog. That's not but a good dog. But the cat dog. believes that if a dog keeps distance, that is a good dog. You see what I mean? So if you listen to the cat, you're going to have the proper uh, adoption. Wow. But if you listen to a dog, uh, a, a, a dog lover, they're going to tell you to rescue the dog that is more excited. But that's not the case. Uh, not for the cat. Yeah. You said it. I, mean, <laughs> I want to make sure that we rescue a, do a dog that the cat agrees and, and you don't need to, like, do it outside the home. Like, the dog can go into the home and... Well, it's, it's kind of hard to bring a cat outside the house. I mean... <laughs> you know what I mean? I do live in yeah. Brooklyn. They walk cats on leashes. They like, do? Yeah, yes, yes. I got, you got to send me a I video of that. I don't, but there are people who do. Yeah, but there's very few. I mean, there, it's not... Yeah. Yeah, it's... That's, yeah. <laughs> What's been the most challenging case you've ever had? Uh, raising my kids. <laughs> 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 Which, by the way, they have a TV show now, you know, Calvin is on Nickelodeon and Andre is on National Geographic, so this is Dog Dynasty. <laughs> okay, kids Thanks. aside, and yeah. they seem to be doing quite well, of the four-legged variety. You know, I, I, I honestly, I, I, I never had a problem with a, with a dog. I, I, really? Even if a dog is aggressive, I'm not afraid of. Even if a dog is fearful, I don't lose my patience. You know, so I do believe the dog, uh, the only goal they have is harmony and balance. So if I do exercise, mental stimulation, and then affection, at one point they're going to recover. So it, the human is the most challenging mm -hmm. species for me. You know, training human to let go of the past. Mm -hmm. uh, training humans to actually exercise or to encourage humans to do it. This is the right thing. Or to understand calm, assertive energy. That's more difficult for me than actually telling a dog, uh, how to live a normal life because that's all they want. They don't care about fame, money, power. What they care is how can we mm -hmm. have a life where there's harmony and balance. And we're, the, the, you know your expectations. I feel yeah, that that's very important yeah, with animals too. They, they live know. a very yeah. simple life. We live a complicated life. 
right? So for me, that's more, much more challenging. When I'm working with a species that is more intellectual, more rational, they just react to the situation. Mm -hmm. So once you change the environment, they change. Is there a breed that's more difficult than others? Well, people believe that is the, the pit bulls are the most uh, challenging. The, you know, people believe that uh, bulldogs, are, bulldogs are stubborn. And uh, they, they, you know, they put titles on all these uh, breeds. But I don't think it's the breed, animal, dog, breed, name. So if you communicate to an animal and you fulfill the needs of a dog, then you're going to accomplish what everybody wants, which is the obedient dog. So what is obedient means? A dog that trusts you and respects you. Is that only for certain breeds or no. all dogs? That's right. So I mean, can, look at this dog. He's sleeping. Well, he's, he's like relaxed right chill. now. But yeah. if you, so if you bring the toy, the, the excitement again, right? So then the brain comes out. Come on, Junior. See it? You can wake him up. You can... You can. <laughs> right. See the attention. Mm -hmm. So even though he's not like barking, you can see you can see the he's excitement. Engaged. Can you see yeah. it? You can see the excitement right through his eyes. So, so it's no verbal mm -hmm. conversation, but the energy and the body language it tells you that I'm ready to go for the wall whenever you say it. <laughs> you see it? And by the way, you guys, lest anyone have a bad opinion of pit bulls, I met this dog. I petted him. He licked me right. He's the friendliest, sweetest, kindest. Well, Junior travels yeah. all over the world. You know, it's very important to expose a dog to different scenarios. Mm -hmm. and, and that way you, you actually challenge the mind to different scent, to different mm -hmm. sounds, to different sights, different energies. Uh, we go all over the world, and um, this is the happiest dog on the planet because he gets to pee all over the world. <laughs> that is the greatest thing you can give to a dog, and he's actually. With you. Yeah, well, I mean, that is my gift. You know, that's what I get. I don't mm -hmm. get to travel by myself, I get to bring home with me. But for him, just the fact that he's peeing on top of other dogs, like, yeah. that's the ultimate thing. Yeah. Now, let me, let me ask you this. Since you said that the hardest part of your job is the human aspect, yeah. do you have people that just can't take your advice or they take oh it? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, humans are stubborn. <laughs> humans are ways. in denial. Yeah. Humans hold on to fear. Humans are judgmental. You see, so we have a lot of things that we have to work towards mm -hmm. before we actually say we're going to transform ourselves. Dogs are not judgmental. Dogs are, uh, to me, I don't, I, I don't think dogs dislike a human because the color of a skin or because the no. size of it. No, they don't see that. You know, what, what they don't like is an energy. If you have the wrong energy, don't expect a dog to be comfortable with you. You know, so they're actually more profound than a human. We're visual. They're actually more intuitive. So how do you get people, I mean, if you get someone who's incredibly stubborn, who's like, nah, not going to do it, not yeah. going to do it. I'd rather live in isolation with my German shepherd for five years and never yeah. see another person. Yeah. Well, the human, the, the human in the city, uh, his motivation and his biggest concern is money. So once he's about to lose money, then it gets motivated. Oh, once he's, yeah. about, to, he's about to be once sued? Once they're charging more or they're going to lose, that's yeah. right. Once they enter into a lawsuit and then the motivation kicks in. Or once they are about to pay a lot of money, the motivation kicks in. I'd rather people uh, understand prevention. That's why I want Calvin to start with mm -hmm. the TV show because the next generation in America, two to five, five years old, they're going to learn prevention. They're going to learn how, how to pet a dog, how to, how to fulfill a dog. What is what, what, what is what makes a dog happy? So if you ask a kid what breed is it, they don't know. What they know is this is a dog. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So that, that, abu that beautiful uh, naive mentality, uh, you're going to fill it up with healthy information. You know, how can we make kids become leaders who love a dog versus a society that we have right now, dog lovers who don't know how to lead a dog. Therefore, the dog leads their lives. What's the biggest mistake that people make with dogs? The single, like if you had to pinpoint the one single biggest mistake. Well, it changes through the years. Right now, I think the biggest mistake is that we're not respecting the right of a dog being a dog, right? So we talk about human rights, and so we, we went through that revolution, and now is people believe that dogs are humans. So by humanizing a dog, mm -hmm. you take the right away. And, and, and so they have their own way of learning. They have their own culture. They have their own uh, rituals. So when you believe that they're humans, you're going to apply human psychology, you like it or not. Right? So by you breaking that law, you just set them up to fail. Because they are dog. Right? They're happy being that way. So, so when, when you, you anthrom anthropomorphize... That, uh, that is what's happening right now, mm -hmm. where the human, you know, uh, where the human says, no, you are not a dog, you are a human, because that's what I need. Yeah, so it becomes a very selfish 
um, beginning or, or, or way of having a relationship with someone who accepts you as who you are, which is the sad and part of it because everybody says, you know, what, what do you like about a dog? I just love the unconditional love. Yeah. But the human is very conditional. Yes, you're a dog, but I want you to be human. You understand my point? Yeah, so the, the, I want to love him as who he is. Animal, dog, breed, name. That's who he is. And you have to be aware of what his needs are. I want him to be yeah. happy being himself. That's my main, that's Aww, my biggest goal. Oh, Junior, do you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Do you hear that, baby boy? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Don't he we doesn't want to be a cat or a penguin. He <laughs> wants to be a dog. Have and you I want to be a Have human. you ever met an, a dog that is beyond help? Uh, I, I, I've been around dogs that have neurological problems, oh, you know, okay. and that's why puppy meals are not yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ideal because people just breed whatever genetics, you know. But in nature, uh, uh, they're not going to uh, uh, breed with an unhealthy mm -hmm. gene, you know. So, so that's hap that happens only in the city. Yeah. And if for someone going to get a dog. That is dangerous. <laughs> that is a dangerous pit bull. Oh my God! Look, <laughs> yeah, he's no, a like, threat. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Say what? I said he's a threat. Look yeah, at him. He's, a oh, he's like, like, um, if so, for anyone out here who's who wants to go get a dog, yeah. what would you advise them to do? I, I, you know, my suggestion for a lot of people now is foster first, so that way you get to have the flavors of different energies. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you can, if you can exercise the the uh, putting emotions aside and learn to assess and evaluate an energy and set rules by its limitations, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a, a better uh, adoption. Because what happens a lot of times, people just go in a shelter and they feel sorry and they feel bad and they just grab whatever dog is the worst, you know, or whatever dog feels the worst or looks the worst. Yeah. <laughs> then they grab that dog, they bring it home and they, they set no rules, boundaries, limitations. Then that human, and I'm feeling, well, he was fine in the beginning, but now he is a menace. This is the reality. From 10 dogs for rescue, six are returned. You understand? Every yeah. week from, from 10 dogs for rescue, six are returned. Because people can't cope with them. It wasn't compatible. You see it? It wasn't compatible. The energy was, they were not rescuing the dog from his energy. They were rescuing the dog because they feel bad about mm -hmm. him. Or that was the cutest dog in there. That's, so yeah. yeah, or their so lifestyle, visual doesn't... or emotional. My 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 goal is to teach people to be more assessing and evaluating the energy of the mm -hmm. dog, and immediately to know what is the needs of a dog. So if he's nervous, he needs to work on his self esteem. If he's too excited, he needs to run. He needs to go for a long walk. And when you rescue a dog, please take him for a long walk because most dogs are in kennels twenty four seven. That's actually really great advice. And that way you see how, how you relate to them while walking them, if they're even leash trained, all that stuff. You notice that homeless people don't have problems with dogs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why the homeless doesn't have a, a separation anxiety, aggression, and fear? Because he walks a lot. That's pretty much the only activity homeless do. They don't go to a dog park. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, don't go, they, they just don't do that kind of socialization. What, what homeless do is they walk. They migrate constantly with the purpose of finding cans. And, you mm -hmm. know, the destination is a migration behavior. So they keep it very natural, very organic. And that's what dogs need. Well, look at this audience. I'm sure you very guys quiet. have questions. I'm scared. Oh, no, they're going to speak up All now. right, good. Hi, Caesar. They're in a calm state. <laughs> I've been using your methods for years with several dogs. And I have a wire-haired Vishla puppy right now. And she's wonderful. Yeah. I have absolutely no issues with her. Field training, take her for long walks, That's very awesome. consistent training. She does place. I can walk away. All good. Mm -hmm. My problem is with strangers that want to that throw themselves at her and want to pet her. Yeah. And I say she's in training. You know, I, I'll I'll let her sit. She'll get a reward, but please don't approach. Mm -hmm. And and I get wise remarks like, oh, is she still in training? You know, <laughs> see her day after day. So what can I do to nicely tell these people, hey, back off? Well, you're going to have the humans who say, dogs love me. So regardless of what you believe are, and you, regardless of listening to Caesar, I don't care. I have to pet every single dog on the planet. Yeah, uh, that that's actually shows you, I mean, your, your point is, people want to touch, talk, and give eye contact. The right thing to do is no touch, no talk, no eye contact. That is the right thing to do. Let the dog come to you if that's what he wants. But everybody likes to, most people like to impose their affection towards the dog. It's more about them than it is about the human. And so the truth is, you're going to find yourself repeating it. So just better surrender to it. Because human is not ready yet to hear rules, boundaries, limitations towards them. 
you know, which that, that should be our way to demonstrate respect. Distance, let the dog come to you, let him smell you, let him see you, let him feel you. Then they want to be touched. They don't want to be touched right up because they don't know the person. You know what I mean? We, we don't accept people that just come into our intimate space if we don't invite them into our intimate space. Yeah, you said that. I saw that episode on your show where you I know. walked right up to that woman and stood Yeah, so and this is like, what most people do. That's a dog right there, and they start going this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it's like, what's wrong with Caesar? So that's exactly what the dog will feel, yeah. right? Especially insecure dogs when you go and do, oh, my God, you so, the insecure dog is going to become more insecure. So that approach does not, is not healthy for all dogs. Only happy go luckies if you do, if you break the, they're only, they're going to stay that way. But the dogs that bite and the dog that is insecure, they're going to have a problem with that approach. So I'm, you know, I'm with you on the no touch, no dog, no eye contact. Hopefully one day we, next generation America, I guarantee you they will do it because they're kids. So that's all they heard. Caesar said, Calvin said not to touch dog, give eye contact. That's what they're going to hear at an early age. Uh, yeah. Like I always, you know, tell my son and his friends, always ask first, never approach, you know, always wait for the dog to come to you. I want to teach kids to actually assess and evaluate so they don't even have to ask. They actually be, be, uh, they become knowledgeable. That dog feels nervous. That dog feels anxious. That dog feels, mm -hmm. you know, tense. So they don't even have to say, that dog is not ready for me. That's the kind of awareness we need to have. That's what makes me a dog whisperer, you know, the ability to know a dog from a distance. Oh, there, there's a lady in the back. Hello, Caesar. Nice to talk with you. Um, we have a six-year-old Akita, and we love him to death. He's the, the highlight of our household. And um, we've had a problem with him since he was five months old in terms of growling and showing his dominance. And um, we don't know how to break him of it. We've had psychiatrists talk with, or work with us. Um, we've tried um, ignoring him when he does that. We've tried taking toys away. Um, tried all different tactics, but we can't seem to stop it. He'll come to the door to greet us because he's happy to see us, his tail will wag, and then he'll growl at us instead of licking our face, which I know Akitas don't do, but he just will growl and show his teeth. He'll come over to us for love, and he'll growl at us, and then when we don't pet him, he's looking at us like, well, why aren't you petting me? And we'll walk away, and he'll come up to us, well, I don't understand, why aren't you petting me right now? So how do we break him of that behavior? I, I think it's a... Uh before we break the dog's behavior, we have to uh, un, uh, make sure the human is not confused, right? So the dogs, to me, sound confused. So where did he learn this confusion? So that's something that we teach. You follow what I mean? Yeah, because the dog is coming to you um, in a friendly manner, but yet he growls. That's kind of confused. It's a very confusing behavior. How did he learn that? Where did he learn that from? I know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I, uh, do you remember the episode I did with Holly? It's a, it's a Labrador that they actually became very insecure and she started growling only around food. And then she ended up biting people. But they show it at an early age. But most people say, well, he's just a puppy. Don't do anything about it. And then that behavior grows with them. So the most important part is understand uh, the, the energy when he's doing it and what are you doing at that time. That's... That's to me is, is what's missing in that to give you a, a more specific approach to the situation. So if you send me a video, I can actually uh, uh, help you break it down better. Would you send me a video? Okay, so uh, I, you talk to my PR and then, yeah, so I can tell you exactly what's happening. And I think we have time for one more question. Um, I have a long hair two hour and I walk in my feed him, give him attention. Um, he's happy to see me, but I'm told by the vet that he's like an alpha male and he identifies with males. So when he sees my boyfriend, I become chopped liver and it's like, forget about it, he goes crazy. So I know psychologically it's hard for me, but what's the best way to deal with that situation? What are your rituals? You wake up in the morning, walk us through it. So how do you guys have in, begin the relationship? How do um, you become a chopped liver? Well, uh, well see, I mean, just in comparison, it's just like No, no, you, I understand. Yeah. And, but, but, you know, but see, the, the point is you, you give yeah. that position away. 80% of my clients are women. Uh -huh. 80%. Okay. Right? And so what, what most females like to do is they begin uh, a relationship with affection first. All right? So they begin the relationship with affection. And by doing that, the female says, I'm here to follow you. So, okay, let's w walk us through the whole, you wake up in the morning and what happened? That he wakes you up, that you wake him up. I get up first, and I change the food in the morning, and then within like an hour I walk him. Like, keep that later in the day. Right. Like, put him to work today. Yeah. 
And when she's walking, it's in front, next to you, behind. Yeah. That's dominant behavior. Wait, I can wait, tell wait, you listen, that from my dog. She's beginning. She's, she, the dog is not working for food, number one, right? Because food and water is, is changed right away, right? So you pretty much cook the breakfast and make sure, you know, the dawn of the house gets the breakfast. Then you take this dawn of the house for a walk. But this dawn of the house is in front of you. So you pretty much think about it. You're following him. Right? So, yeah. So in your mind, you see it from, that's my baby, or that's my dog, or that's my beloved thing. But in his mind, he sees you as a source of following. <laughs> you see it? Most males, most males, when they see a dog, uh, we have a tendency to walk and do this. Right? Just to walk, yeah. Most females go... So think about it from an energy perspective. So, so female energy goes down and male's energy goes up. So when a dog in, uh, meets a dog, uh, when a dog meets a human, uh, you know, in, in, in the male gender, what he experiences is this. And when, they, when that dog meets a, a, a human who is a female, experience this energy. Oh my goodness. I know that's what I do. Right? <laughs> Especially when they're little. Little dogs are, have, a, have a higher rate of being more aggressive than big dogs. Why? Because people with little dogs, when the little dog misbehave, they grab him and they carry him. And while the dog is growling at the big dog, they say, don't do that. Mommy doesn't like it. <laughs> and the little dog, he wants to kill it. So he ends up being on top of it. You see it? Yeah. So it's how do you give this position away? So you just gave us a clue. I begin by cooking breakfast for him. Then he takes me for a walk. <laughs> so if you change that ritual, you're going to change the way he perceives you. And what would be the first thing to change? Well, I think he should work for food. <laughs> you see, he's getting breakfast as soon as he wakes up. Okay. Which is at a very emotional point of view. You know, it's like, he's hungry. He just woke up. Trust me, he's not hungry. Because animals are used to walk for food and water. They're used to it. That's how they earn food and water. So when you eliminate that, you deprive that natural connection. It's okay for them to work for food and water. That's how they appreciate. Okay, he earned it. Okay. He followed you. Yeah. You guys went from point A to point B. You pass a lot of uh, obstacles. But it can be pee. It can be dogs barking. It can be cats. It can be squirrels. So his, his job is not to pay attention to them. Then because he accomplished that, then you come and feed him. He follow you, then you reward with food. But right now, it's just wake up, food, and then you follow him. And you pick up his poop, so imagine, you know, like that's... <laughs> yeah, Basically, they don't, they don't. talking to you, I have to say, I did every single thing wrong with my dog, Buster. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Buster. But think you about know? it. That's why I have a TV show. Yeah. Because <laughs> what you're saying is what millions of people repeat. Right? So that's the only reason why I'm, I become interested. <laughs> an interesting person to be on TV. And in a third country, people don't have problems with dogs. The big problem in a third country is food. But it's not separation anxiety. It's not aggression. Yeah. People don't have problems with dogs. See, it, it, that's, a, that's a more modern uh, world. No, you're, abs you're absolutely right. It's, ama it's absolutely amazing. Um, and this is really, I think, good advice for everyone, whether you have a dog or not, because eventually, I think at some point, all of us will have. An animal of some sort. Yeah, so listen, there's three kinds of humans. The dog lovers, the people who are afraid of dogs, and the people who don't like dogs. So the more we know about, about a dog, the more we know how to relate mm -hmm. to them. So, you know, knowing dog psychology is not for the people who have dogs. It's for people who don't have dogs. It's for people who are afraid of dogs. Because the knowledge is actually going to help you at least become neutral. You see what I mean? It's, it's just the knowledge part. Yeah, it's, we love dogs, but we don't know about dogs. That's why they develop problems. Well, thank you so My much. My pleasure. Thank you guys and for watch the third having me back. Oh! Oh. <laughs> Junior's like, I'm the star here. Yeah. Excuse me.